This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about Satoshi's Halloween. Some of you have been asking me how Bitcoiners can dress up for Halloween, and I think there are a few possible ways to go. You can go as a clown, and there are many different ways to go as a clown in this space. There's this guy, there's this guy, and of course there's this guy who's one of the biggest clowns of all, in my opinion. You could also go as a witch, and there are many different forms of witches. You could be a yelling witch, or you could be a war in which both of them extremely scary costumes if you choose to do it. So do be careful. Or you could just go as one of the biggest fools in America. Not quite as exciting as the other costumes, but definitely a possibility. Best possibility perhaps would just be to, to go as Joe Lubin's awkward lap kitten. And, and maybe you can go for a hike in purple clothes like this. Meanwhile, Halloween is important for other reasons. October 31st also marks the beginning of the coming of Bitcoin because it was the day that Satoshi published the Bitcoin white paper. It's widely known as Bitcoin white paper day. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. Here's the famous post from October 31st, 2008. I've been working on a new electronic cash system that's fully peer-to-peer -peer with no trusted third party. The paper is available at Bitcoin. Org. The main property is double spending is prevented with a peer-to-peer -peer network, no mint or other trusted parties. Participants can be anonymous. New coins are made from hash cash style proof of work. That was Adam Back's innovation. The proof of work for new coin generation also powers the network to prevent double spending. I'd encourage you to take a look at the Bitcoin paper on a day like this. It's fairly readable. There are parts that are a little bit difficult, uh, but it's definitely worth taking a look at to see where this all came from. Fun fact, the white paper never once uses the words crypt cryptocurrency or blockchain, which have unfortunately been so abused and used by scammers. The whole context for the release of the Bitcoin white paper it really was released in the heart of the great financial crisis. Lehman Brothers had just collapsed and filed for bankruptcy on September 15th, 2008, so approximately a month and a half before Satoshi released the white paper. Now, the white paper itself preceded the launch of the Bitcoin network by a few months. The first, the Genesis block, was put out by Satoshi on January 3rd of 2009, and then the first real block that was mined came out, I believe, a day or two after that. So why October 31st for the release of the Bitcoin white paper? We'll, we'll never know for sure, but there are a few theories. Of course, there's the Halloween connection, which we've been talking about. It's a day when you get to pretend to be someone else and not use your real name. And this is one of the things about Satoshi's pseudonymous presence and absence. It's one of Bitcoin's greatest strengths, the fact that we don't know who he is and the fact that he left the project. In terms of Halloween, some people have suggested that this is a nod by Satoshi towards back towards All Hallows Eve, which is the etymological source of the word and the holiday Halloween. Hallows, it's a little bit like the German word Heilige. It's derived from an Anglo-Saxon word, which is a cognate for saints. Saints would be the French version of the word. Hallows would be the more Germanic Anglo-Saxon version of it. So how All Hallows Eve was the eve of All Hallows, All Hallows being November 1st, also known as All Saints Day, when you look back and remember the saints and martyrs and the faithful departed. So this may have been Satoshi's way of looking back and saying, I, I stand on the shoulders of these great men, the cypherpunks. Some people prefer to peer a little further back in history and examine the more pagan roots of Halloween, this uh, Gaelic festival of Samhain, in which uh, you sort of mark the end of the harvest season and the beginning of the darker time of the year. This is one theory that I like. It's it's probably not a one-to-one -one correspondence, but this idea that Satoshi knew that we were entering something like the fourth turning, and this was really the beginning of the end for this particular cycle. And so he wanted his paper to be published right as you, we were entering what this Wikipedia article calls the beginning of winter or the darker half of the year. And Bitcoin certainly is the gift of light in this very, very dark period as the financial system's wheels are coming off. So that's the Halloween, the All Hallows Eve version and the Samhain version. There's also the Protestant Reformation version. It turns out that Martin Luther sent his 95 theses along with a letter to the Archbishop of Mainz, uh, Albert of Brandenburg. There's some debate about whether he actually also nailed them to the Wittenberg church. This is commonly considered the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, and so Satoshi would 
be analogizing his uh, his his Bitcoin white paper to the 95 theses. Satoshi is the great reformer of money. Yes, possibly, but it seems to me that Bitcoin is something much more radical than mere reformation and cleaning house. It's a real radical break from the fiat period of the preceding decades. And Bitcoin is this new beginning that uses innovations from previous decades, like public key cryptography, proof of work, network theory, but then brings them together in a really unique and quirky way to create a robust series of incentive, incentives that help both to protect and to expand the network and its native asset, which is BTC. The release of the Bitcoin white paper on October 31st, which we're celebrating today, the 15th anniversary of it, and the launch of the Bitcoin network just a few months later really marks a seminal event, not just in the history of money, but also in the history of human freedom and human invention and discovery, really on par with things like the publication of the U.S. Constitution, possibly even the discovery of fire, because in many ways, Satoshi is like this Prometheus who steals fire from the gods and gives it to the mortals so that they can use it in a very dark time. If you want to do some other uh, sort of homework on a day like this, this is a great book. You should check out Phil Champagne's book, The Book of Satoshi, that aggregates all of the writings of Satoshi that we have online and puts them in a very nice chronological ordering. So that's definitely worth checking out as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.